Christian burial that will only seek her own salvation. I tell thee she is, and therefore make her grave straight. The crowd outside on her and found a Christian burial. How can that be? Unless she drowned herself in her own defense. Well, just found so. It must be say offended over. It cannot be over. Here lies the point. If I drown myself wittingly, it argues an act. And an act have three branches. It is to do, to act, to perform. Our God, she drowned herself wittingly. But here you good man, don't they? If we leave. Here lies the water. Good. Here stands the man. Good. If the man goes to the water, oh! and drown himself, it is willy-nilly, he goes, mark you that. But if the water comes to him and drown him, he drowns not himself. Our God, he that is not guilty of his own death, short stone his own law. But is this law? <laughs> ah, Mary, tis Corona's quest law. We have truth on it. If she had not been a good gentlewoman, she would have been married out to Christian merit. Why, there thou sayest, and the pity that great folks should have the countenance in this world to drown or hang themselves more than they're even Christian. <sighs> Come, my spade. There are no ancient gentlemen. There are no ancient gentlemen, but gardeners, ditchers, and grave makers. They hold up Adam's confession. Well, see, gentlemen, he was the first that ever bore arms. What? He had them? What? Art thou a heathen? How dost thou understand the scripture? The scripture says Adam dig. Could he dig without arms? <laughs> I'll put another question to thee if thou answerest me not for the purpose. Confess thyself. Go to. What is he that built stronger than either the mason, the shipwright, or the carpenter? Ah, the gallows maker, for his frame that lives a thousand tenants. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, like thee went well in faith, the gallows does well, but how does it well? It does well to those that do ill. Now, thou dost ill to say the gallows was built stronger than the church, our God, <laughs> the gallows may do thee well. <laughs> Do it again, come. What's built stronger than a mason, a shipwright, and a carpenter? Ah, tell me that, my yoke. Mary, I can tell. I cannot tell. Cut all my brains, no more about it. For your dull ass will not end this pace with beating. And when you are asked this question next, say a grave maker. The house he made last till doomsday. <laughs> Oh, Lord of clay, what you be me? Such a guest is me. Who could track those? Is this fellow no feeling of his business that he seems at great thoughtfulness? Custom hath made it into a property of business, is even so the hand of little one it has the danger sense. Who's great is this, sir? Mine, sir! <laughs> I think it be thine, for thou liest in it. You lie out on it, sir, therefore tis not yours. For my part, I do not lie in it, and yet it is mine. Thou dost lie in it, to be in it and to say it is thine. Tis for the quick, not for the dead. Therefore thou liest. Tis a quick lie, sir, to go away again from me to you. What man is to be buried here? Oh, no man, sir. What woman, then? None either. Who is to be buried in it? Oh, one that was a woman, sir, but rest her soul, she's dead. <laughs> How absolute the name is. We must speak by the card or equivocation allowed to us. How long hast thou been a grave maker? <sighs> of all the days of the year I came to it that day that our last king had it overcame fortune grass. When was this? Can't you tell that? <laughs> Every fool can tell that. It was the day that young King Hamlet was born, and he that is 
Mad and sent into England. Aye, Mary. Why was he sent into England? Well, because he was mad. He shall regain his wits there, or if he do not, tis no great matter there. Why? Well, there the men are as mad as he. <gasps> How can he be mad? Very strangely, they say. How strange. I think he would lose his wits. Upon what ground? Why, well, here in Denmark! <laughs> I've been sexton here, man and boy, thirty years. How long will a man lie here, very wrong? Uh, if faith he be not wrong before he die, <laughs> he'll last you some eight or nine years. Uh, this skull here, sir. Now this skull hath lain here three and twenty years. Whose was it? <laughs> a horse and that fellow's it was. Who do you think it was? Nay, I know not. Pistol is on it for a bad rogue. He wore a flag and a British on my head once. <laughs> this same skull, sir, was your ex skull, the King's Jester. This. Me and that? Let me see. Alas. Poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times. And now, how abhorred in my imagination it is! My gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your jives now? Your candles, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar. Not one now to mock your own brain, quite check fallen. Now get you to your lady's chamber and tell her to this finger she must return. Let her laugh at that. To what base uses we may return, Horatio? No salt! No salt! Besides, here comes the king! The king! The court here! 